Thank you. Um, I really appreciate your being here today. It's my pleasure, Senator. What a, uh, an opportunity to really have a conversation. And so you chronicle this epidemic um, as having its roots two decades ago, at least. Yes. And yet we find ourselves still scrambling and in some cases not gaining ground but losing ground. I, I want to share, I represent um, Wisconsin and um, the, the new front of this battle uh, appears to be fentanyl. Uh, it does indeed. And uh, in a community like Milwaukee County, the largest county in the state of Wisconsin, fentanyl specifically uh, was the cause of 170 deaths in 2017, combined with other opioid overdoses. Yeah. Um, there are about 420 in that county last year. I'm sorry. Yeah, and um, it, it's just one example in uh, the state of Wisconsin. Uh, and, and at this point, you know, there's no uh, sense that 2018 is going to be a turnaround year. Uh, no. Despite the fact that um, Milwaukee County has a very committed heroin task force um, and leaders from our local law enforcement um, and health providers have been collaborating to address this. I, I wanted to sort of dovetail on your conversation with the chairman about um, synthetics like fentanyl sort of changing uh, this epidemic in some ways. Um, do we need to be prepared for even a next generation of synthetic opioid? Um, and uh, what is the federal role, again, uh, in assisting communities? Well, gosh, it's a huge question, I, th I think, and I'm not sure I have all the answers to it. I have but... a couple more huge questions for you, too. So. <laughs> yeah, I'm sure. Well, <laughs> there's just nothing but huge questions in this topic, it seems to me. Um, uh, yeah, fentanyl has been um, remarkable, and it's transformative. It's like the third stage, you know, starts with pills, then the heroin, and now we're on to fentanyl, and carfentanyl, which is rhinoceros painkiller, you know. Um, I, I, I do believe that uh, it's my belief strongly, having lived in Mexico, that, that it is calling on us to understand that the only way we are going to stop any kind, have any kind of effect on fentanyl is by working with Mexico, not at odds with Mexico. There's no way you can stop the, the, the smuggling of fentanyl. We alone can stop the smuggling of fentanyl into the, the United States because it is so small. A sugar packet worth of fentanyl kill everybody in this room, you know. So, um, and probably in this whole floor. Um, so my, my feeling is that one thing we need to, that seems to be extraordinarily counterproductive, in my opinion, having lived in the country for a long time, is uh, a rhetoric that uh, demonizes Mexico. I'm not saying that by, as a way of saying, putting on rosy, you know, kind of rose-colored glasses with regard to Mexico. I live there. I know the, the issues. I know the corruption. I know the, the depth of problems that they have there. But nevertheless, I think in a person-to-person -person connection, which we never really have achieved as government, uh, to government, I don't think, that from what I can see, uh, that is how you advance. You know, they, they just shut down. It was a very interesting case in July. They shut down uh, two major dark web marketplaces um, in July uh, of last year, and they did it with Europol, Thai police, Dutch police, FBI, DEA, some others, I think. It was a classic example of how you make a huge dent in supply by working with these governments, a global economy, the only groups apparently that don't work together are governments. And, and that was one example I, would, I thought was fascinating of how you move forward. And that is the, that to me, those are the ways that you help local law enforcement. Local, being in local law enforcement today f feels to me like you're standing in the, in the ocean trying to keep back the tide when yeah. it's talking about this topic. It, it, let me, I'm gonna ask a question. I don't think there's gonna be time for an answer, but maybe we can uh, uh, follow up. Sure. Um, I've held a lot of round tables with stakeholders uh, um, from recovering addicts, family members who've lost loved ones, law right. enforcement, health, et cetera, around the state. You talk so much about 
solving this through ending isolation and having stronger communities. I do find some significant variation between what I hear in urban centers in Wisconsin and what I hear in rural areas. Everything from uh, the availability of resources to help people who want to get treatment for their abuse, even to um, what drugs are being taken yeah. uh, and abused. And I uh, would love to hear uh, your thoughts. Um, I don't, I'm not going to be able to stay for the second round, um, but perhaps in follow-up about sure. uh, how we strengthen communities in all of those different settings as they respond to sometimes unique and sometimes common uh, challenges. Okay, then. 